Uh, listen to this. This is a big kiss. Hello, Doc. Good evening. God bless your work. God bless you. Your work is a calling. Ulcers, gastritis made me walk like a cripple. Through your teachings, I'm healing progressively. Very soon, I'll give my testimony. Listen, this is already a testimony. I talked about ulcers before, and people were like, ah, no, Dr. no, 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 no. There's no way somebody who has ulcers can fast. But you see, the weird part is, and I challenge you, when, when I see such a comment, I come hard on you. So I ask you, you've not been fasting, right? Because you, you are not an advocate of fasting. So you ended up getting ulcers without fasting. So how can you tell me about how to heal ulcers when you're suffering from ulcers and you did not fast? You came in to ask me, I need my gastritis fixed. And then I ask you, what are you eating? How many meals do you do in a day? You tell me, when I get the ulcers, I eat to at least relieve the pain. I tell you now, it's time for you not to do that. And then you're like, ah, oh, doctor, but, uh, but my doctor told me. And I'm asking you, like, who are you talking to right now? Hmm? Who are you talking to right now? If your doctor told you to keep eating and you're still here, why are you here? Because if your doctor told you something and it's working for you, you wouldn't be here seeking for my advice about this. So when I tell you to fast during ulcers, I mean it. I know that fasting will actually concentrate the stomach acid and your ulcers will just disappear. But you're there eating six meals a day just because you have ulcers and you want to suppress the pain. You're not even digesting that food. So you just move from the ulcers to, digest to indigestion and bloating and constipation. And the next thing is hemorrhoids. But you don't listen. Okay? So sometimes just give me a benefit of doubt. And I always tell people, if you give me five minutes to just listen to me for five minutes, I will give you about 15 minutes to just tell your history. But in those 15 minutes, you give me five minutes... And believe me, you start seeing things differently. And that's the beauty about it. So yes, big kiss. You're already having a, a very good testimony. And we appreciate you for that. Uh, Kinyash is saying, can't wait to gain my confidence back, Doc. I enrolled the two-month program. The two-month has just kicked on. And it's already tremendous. Already there are questions that are coming in that are actually telling me the system set us up. <laughs> Anytime I put a post on diets and nutrition in that group, there must be questions. Every weight loss group, anytime I put out a post that is talking about nutrition, there must be new questions. Then I start asking myself, if, if this thing, if this is new to these people and they're asking all these questions, how many people really need this information? But the truth is, I can't put out all this information on, I don't know, I put out information every single day. Specifically on my Telegram channel, I, I try to make sure that I put out something every single day to just open up your head. Something is there. So if you go on the search button, you'll get so much there. Okay. Good evening. Uh, I was 74 kgs, did intermittent fasting with one meal. Thank God, I, I think it's, I reduced thyroid medicine, uh, dropped ulcer medication, reduced my weight to 58 kgs. Mamamboga from Mombasa. Eh, hey, Ahmed. Tremendous. Tremendous. Yeah. <laughs> Did I just read that out loud? Mamamboga from Mombasa? Well. <laughs> hey, we move regardless. People hardly do CPD. Betty, hey, thank you for bringing out that. CPD. Now, listen. Our slogan from today henceforth will, will simply be CPD. Why CPD? Consistency, patience, and discipline. There is no way you can fast this week. And then, possibly three days. The fourth day, you're wondering, my ulcers are still here. Dr. but you told me my ulcers will go away when I fast. You just fasted three days. I've been following you, Dr. Uh, faithfully. But I'm not seeing any change. Then I ask you, how long have you been following me? Uh, I think about a week ago. I'm like, huh? how old are you? I am 34. Well, well. <laughs> so for 33 years, you've, eat, you've et eaten yourself all these bad foods. And now you want these things to change in three days. I, 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 I. Doc, I've fasted and I'm, I feel like fainting. Eh? Uh -huh. Okay. How long have you fasted? Uh, this is my first fast. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes, that's the feeling when you fast for the first time. Everybody gets that problem. Every time you fast for the first time for a prolonged fast, and then you, of course, you get the anxiety to break the fast and thank yourself for fasting. Whips the body whips you with the diarrhea. I'm like, Dr. I got a diarrhea. Is everything okay? 
or is there actually this is the question is there a problem uh, we've been brainwashed to think that anything that goes different from our expectation is a problem you don't even see that the body is actually trying to tell you hey you broke the fast the wrong way you're actually asking is there a problem you just did a 48 hour fast for the first time 48 hour fast is not for the weak and the faint hearted it's for somebody who actually has the discipline but now that you know put in the CPD put in the consistency keep doing it when you get that light diarrhea it's not even abnormal upset it's just a diarrhea put, put in the, the effort put in the, the consistency put in the discipline put in the patience and just sit back and see how your body reacts uh huh is somebody else here CPD, that's the, that's, the, that's the message. Let me just bring in this guy. CPD, thank you for that one, uh, Betty A. The consistency is the hardest part. The consistency uh, is the hardest part. You cannot, you can, <laughs> most of you can attest to that. You can do a 48 hour fast now, and by the time you're closing your eyes to open, it's already one week gone or two weeks gone, and you have to do another one. You're like, ah, this one I'm not doing. <laughs> Can we fast for 48 hours without water? No, protect the kidneys by rehydrating with water and salt. Yes, Miki. How are you, Dr. Ray? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome to Testimonial Tuesday. So, I've realized there is a gap mm -hmm. uh, in the hospitals. Yeah. Uh, some time ago, we talked about the vitamins, the deficiencies, and the toxic side. Mm -hmm. Then I I asked you if we could talk about uh, the the minerals the same way like the deficiency the toxic side and then we didn't have a chance for that mm -hmm. so I thought if you consider that we can talk about it then the relationship with other uh, nutrients because you see like like iron and calcium they don't go together right. Mm -hmm. So do, we we just need to discuss these things and how we can get them adequately from food, not hindering absorption and uh, assimilation of each other. No, but let me tell you, uh, the reason why you started put giving giving it an attention in that direction is because you went to the syllabus and you were taught drug and mineral interactions. If nobody taught you about the interaction, you wouldn't know. So yeah. that's a problem. Number two. Yep. Your great grandfather used to eat vegetables plus meat plus something else plus tubers and all these. Never worried about the the interactions that iron will interact with calcium. He never worried about that. So why would we be forced to worry about interactions? The only thing that we need to be worried about is drug interactions. And the reason why we are worrying about iron being unabsorbable with calcium is because these are the supplements. These are the synthetic things. So the syllabus actually understands that their synthetic things cannot even be absorbed, leave alone blocking other absorption, uh, other minerals from being absorbed. On their own, like calcium on its own, you cannot absorb it without a concentrated stomach acid. And that's why our great-grandfather used to fast and then drink bone broth. But you see, nowadays, they can tell you easily, you don't need to fast, because fasting will actually heal you, and they want you back. So what they do is they give you synthetic supplements, and they tell you, you actually eat this or take this with food in the evening. That's what they do to calcium, uh, the chalk, calcium carbonate supplements, the bone supplements. So they give you these synthetic things. And then now, because they have to defend their point, they tell you now, don't take this with this because of interactions. But you see, who cares about interactions when the supplements are actually natural? You don't care about it. Do you care about calcium in green leafy vegetables interacting with iron in red meat? Do you? Miki, do you? Do you care when you're eating your, your sukumawiki with nyama? Do you care that this there's iron in this red meat and there is calcium in these green leafy vegetables and it will bring me a problem? Do you? No, I don't. That's the point. The point is, the syllabus actually brainwashed you to think that their synthetic supplements are the best. That is one. And number two, that you have to take their synthetic supplements without having to add in something else because you block absorption. Maybe in their head they're actually thinking... If you're taking our calcium supplements, you might take iron supplements from another company. So it's actually competition. And they're using you as a lab rat.
So when you're eating healthy, you'll not need the synthetic supplements. So you'll never worry about interactions. Let me tell you, Dr. Shari, mm. <laughs> this thing is going too far because someone told me that uh, now that your nutrition is in un- this facility, why don't you recommend uh, there is this fruit? Kiswahili is a kumanga. No, no. Exactly. That's a very uh, difficult word in English. It's called what? Kukumanga? Yes, yes. Oh, I, mean, I used to think kukumanga is, is yes. a powder. <laughs> There's a, it's a fruit. <laughs> Damn. Yes, it's a fruit. It has an English name or something. I don't remember the name. Eh, 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 eh. Listen, when I was growing up, <laughs> our elder then, brothers who are fat, oh, pomegranate. Ah, yeah. That's the kukumanga. Uh-huh. Yes, yes, that one. Oh, yes, yes. listen, when I was growing up, that was used by our elder brothers who had multiple girlfriends uh, to just boost their, their testosterone, their erection, because I think it's now the natural Viagra or something. So, <laughs> so I used to wonder, ah, why, why are they looking for this food that seriously? And then we were told, no, oh, you know, your bro is a veteran, so he has to boost his... <laughs> oh, uh, tell me about it. Mm-hmm. So this farmer was like, uh, yeah. you see, as, as it has, he has a very big tree full of them, by the way, <laughs> and uh, each of them goes for like 50 to 80 shillings, yes. one, just one. Yes. So he was like, now that you're in, in a facility and you are a nutritionist, why don't you recommend this food to your patients so that I can get some money, then I, I give you your card. Oh, 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 there we go, there we go. So his interest is not even actually uh, mm. the benefits of the fruit. His interest is, I have this fruit here and I have to sell it because, of course, I can't eat it all. So he's looking for money. That one, let people fast to get testosterone. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. So I told him that, uh, uh, to me, fruits are not that much important. If you have something else like uh, pumpkins, then you can tell me. And now he got upset because estrogens went to the roof. Of course. I used to go for vegetables for cheaper price from him. Now I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Somebody is asking me a question here. Somebody is asking me, uh, and, th- and this is a good question. Somebody is asking me, what is the best way to consume eggs? Now, there is no best way to consume eggs. You eat eggs, whether fried, scrambled, or boiled. As long as when you're frying or scrambling them, use ghee or butter or coconut oil or the healthy fats, the tallow, use that. So there's nothing like how is the best. No, it's not about the best way to consume uh, eggs. Because again, when you're eating eggs, because I tell you to eat six to eight eggs every day, Simply at noon, because at noon you're doing a zero carbohydrate diet, so that's the best way to consume. That's the best time to consume eggs. But you can consume eggs in all forms, apart from the raw eggs, because I see people exaggerating it. Just done eating raw eggs. I don't know why people eat raw eggs, though. Hey, the test, yawa. But if you can do it, well done. <laughs> there was a time that they were saying that raw eggs can actually uh, predispose you to, uh, to salmonella typhi. I was like, ah, no, 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 no. You can't start that conversation. You cannot get typhoid, you cannot get brucellosis, you cannot get uh, amoeba if your stomach pH is actually concentrated. Your stomach acid is concentrated. It will protect you from these microorganisms. But you see, you eat very unhealthy foods that destroy your stomach pH, and then now you start blaming it on typhoid. Listen, you are not supposed to blame viruses, bacteria, amoeba, and protozoa. They have to exist. They will be there for a lifetime. You cannot change them. So you will have to learn to live with them. But the only way to suppress them is actually to make sure that your gut pH is fixed. When you fix the gut pH, you'll not worry about the, the diseases. Doc, the problem is people don't want to hear the word fasting. It's true. People don't like fasting. People want to eat. And you can imagine you worked yourself so hard to get here when you can afford now food. And then Doc is telling you uh, to fast. I, this must be a very, very uh, rogue doctor. I mean, I've just made my, my millions. Now I can get some few thousands and walk in KFC and buy that, that chicken. And now he's telling me to stop eating this. I mean, I have suffered from my childhood. Yes, uh, Jambaka. 
Hello. Hello, how are you, bro? Good night, sir. I'm, I'm really hoping that you work on radio. Bro, your, your voice is a radio voice. Me, you have, uh, I love your voice, bro. I'm this week, man, who had no voice at all. Let me tell you, <laughs> yeah, this voice has been only me from you. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard this thing. I, after doing your fasting, after doing everything, after trying, you see. Let me start from, from just from the end. Yes. Right now, I'm just I'm coming from from work with my children in the car. Yeah. My phone, their children, they are here with me. They are now asleep. Yes. Because I don't want anybody to feed them anything. <laughs> <laughs> I left home with them. I went to the ocean in, in, in Shags. Uh -huh. We went to the farm with them. We, 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 we touched cows, goats. We did a lot with them. We went to the uh, animal, uh, animal, uh, uh, the name, uh, Wanyama. Yes. We put our sheep with them, we carried in our pickup truck, we did everything. Mm -hmm. At around uh, one o'clock is when we were having our lunch. They, they had only eggs and water. Yes. Boiled eggs and water, nothing else. At around uh, seven o'clock, we we took some very fatty meat. <laughs> the the one is very fatty. <laughs> very fatty. You must put that fatty in. <laughs> that part. Yeah. And some some wild wild uh, vegetables that we picked from our farm. No no gali. Okay. People are happy. Nobody has even gone for a bowel movement. Only susu. Yeah. We are okay. I don't even need a lady around me because what, what is the lady going to do for my children? You really have to, oh, put, to you, you have to put that spice there. Hey, <laughs> Jabaka. <laughs> you see, you see the ladies there. I, I will I have to always to work with the ladies because in total my pupu, I have to like to uh, make them you see such thing. <laughs> But, but now we are eating so healthy. I realized if we don't come over, you don't even go for bowel movement easily. And you see, the gut is trainable. You can train your gut to only have one bowel movement every single day. Now look at these children, because I, I'm, I'm even surprised. I walk with them. They have a, I'm like, I should have some tissue around, around me, but they don't even disturb. Yeah, bro. Raising children, bro. <laughs> and again, another thing, that, that part of confidence. Somebody just talked about it. Oh, yeah. my confidence is very high. Even my answers to some, uh, when somebody asks me a question or something, yeah, my answers are direct and very and very very okay. Building a man. Now yesterday, yeah. Now yesterday, I was talking yeah. talking to a professor, mm. <laughs> a professor, <laughs> and uh, and his wife who is a do who is also a doctor, a professor and a doctor. Yeah. Both <laughs> of them mocking me this. And they were busy telling me the way I'm doing this thing extremely. I was telling them, tell me what what, what am I doing extreme? Yeah. You know, you cannot just change drastically and then lose weight the way you're losing weight. You know, this is the, the your body has uh, you have been alive for like so 41 years. Mm -hmm. And your body, your, your body has, uh, has uh, adapted this kind of lifestyle. You, get, you can't just drop it like that. I tell, I'm telling them, my friend, I was born in 1983. And by 1993, yeah. I lost my, three of my teeth because, you know, we were living in a, in a, in a show. <laughs> Dr. Lewis. <laughs> Dr. Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the sweets, the, the bread and stuff. Yeah. By 1993, I had uh, my chewing teeth. They are the molars and the premolars. Yeah. I had extracted three of them. You can imagine how, how this thing started long time ago. Yeah. Now, right now, when I just met Dr. Lewis, and now my, my health is coming back. My confidence is coming back. My children, are, I'm putting them to life. Somebody is training me. Somebody is mobile. You is telling me to stop doing it, to stop being so extreme. I'm, I, I, my, if any disease can get me now, I pass very soon. Yeah, it will sweep you off because you are so weak. Yeah. <laughs> I look like my one of my uncles who is so thin. 
<laughs> you know, my father had got two brothers. Yeah. And my father was a teetotaler, a very serious uh, addict of carbohydrates. Yeah. And the, rest, the, two, the two brothers were alcoholics. They never liked eating so much. Yeah. So my father was a teetotaler. He was the first to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, one of them is still alive. Also having BPH, but very thin. That I mean, look at this guy. He is very thin and he's sick. Why are you telling us that? That uh, if you are if you are obese, we are we are, we are, we are, we are sick. What am I missing? Even if I'm obese, and I was telling my friend, I'm not the one telling saying that you're obese. Yeah, you know that you're obese. You actually you actually feeling your own insecurities. The professor guy was not happy at all. He, he nearly slapped, and he was so angry. I don't, I don't believe my friend, you, you are a professor. Yeah. And you know what the way is. He even chucked off his phone and, and started calculating and, and showed me his big EMI was about 31, 31 there. Yeah. You know, I told him, you see, I was only off by 0. 0.0. You are a goose. <laughs> my friend, they looked, they looked to you, uh, you uh, for your information on Google, yeah, and this this guy that you don't know, have any confusion. This is this the, you know, you know the Mugo I remember the one the, the yeah one in Nairobi. the one who was sedating women and, and 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 chewing them. Yes, that one. Yeah. Now my professor said this is another Mugo I remember. <laughs> Now, now I've just moved from Shakaola Master to Wairimu Mugo. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now you know, you guys, I will not tell you to do anything. Yeah. Also, leave me alone. Don't start saying that now what I'm doing is extremely. So you can you pick one thing that I am doing extremely? Just yeah. pick one thing. You know, you have to really, you know, what you are saying is yet to be scientific. But you must moderate. Because you moderate for yourself, I will do my stuff. I will not stop you from doing it. But you also not stop me from doing it. No, you see, even me, that even me, I started running. Uh, and I realized even my knees were starting to hurt, and I had to stop running. You know, they just you know, always walking like, like a madman in town running. You are going to get sick very soon. But how, but how can you, how can a whole running, professor running. how can a whole professor who is obese start running? Even even even, you even the slightest common sense cannot be applied on this one. I told him you are running more than half a assignment on your own, not evenly distributed. You are you are probably your, your knees problems. First of all, lose your weight, and then start to, and then start. Then I told them at the way you want to tell us that. Losing weight or getting weight is eighty-five percent in the kitchen. Yes. And the rest, and now the the level comes. Now somebody was got an eighty-five. You are a teacher. You are a professor. You are you are a teacher. A child was got an eighty-five percent. That's only first first exams. Two or four. You don't know. It depends. I was like, my dear. <laughs> Even the professor does not want to accept that somebody with a five percent marks has not passed. <laughs> Man, uh, it's just a title. It's just a title. Nothing more. <laughs> so what I learned is the ego you are talking about. Yeah. His two guys, his wife, his wife, his sister, is a, a doctor, and he is a professor. Mm-hmm. Both of them are is. They never want to accept that this small man, this younger man, can tell them something that is better. I mean, yeah. That is what I realized. <laughs> is the ego, is the ego is so big they can't accept the truth. <laughs> man, man, do not, do not tire. Keep on, keep on slapping them until one day they hear you, because they will. And at that, at that time, you look to me. My mother is there. Who is suffering from doing a, um, um, those things you are talking about? Uh, is uh, something Saturn? Yes, the Saturn. <laughs> yes, plus I'm loaded with so many, so many drugs. My mother, like the Zoe Mars on her table, there's more than four or five drugs. Yes. I'm trying to fix, I'm trying to bring uh, cabbages. They're like, what are these things? These things you are eating, what, what are they? They are they're like the ones telling my mother not to use them. Yeah. I make, Proper, I meant to be coming from my mouth. And they discourage her. Now she's 
prove that in a way. I bring, I bring a towel. She doesn't use it. <laughs> Yeah, it will, it will, it will, it will clog her arteries and she will die. But she's suffering from hypertension without eating the talo. Imagine, man. Anyway, do not stop preaching. Keep preaching because they will one day hear you. They call me Doctor Lewis. Awesome, awesome, amazing, <laughs> amazing, Doctor Lewis. In the, <laughs> yeah? your professor is getting upset. Your professor is getting disturbed because, of course, there is a new, a new, I'm not new actually, I've been here for about a year or so. So if they start getting upset now, it shall get interesting. Hmm? Tough times are coming. 